Hi everybody, this is Gil with Smile Designer Pro and today we're going to cover a supplementary tutorial on the new feature that we introduced in Smile Designer 2.1. If you haven't already watched our introductory webinar, we recommend you start with that first to get an overview of all the features. Um, and today we're going to cover uh, a special feature in our simulation uh, tool which allows you to use the patient's own tooth color as a source for simulation. So in cases where the simulation is showing uh, a smaller change, if it's a smaller case or you're doing uh, one, two, or three teeth, you're going to want to use the patient's own teeth in the photo as a source for simulation. So let's dive right in. Uh, here we are starting with uh, a design that we've already created and it's all ready to go for simulation. So first we're going to invoke the simulation tool and this is showing the normal workflow uh, when you turn on the simulation tool you're going to set up your lip mask so again if you haven't seen this before you should check out our webinar uh, this is just going to speed through the lip mask setup and uh, get the case to where it would be if you followed along with our original webinar so this is using library teeth as a source for simulation so that looks pretty good, but we can do better because this particular patient has some uh, teeth that we can work with. So we're going to click on the photo button in the simulation tool and select the natural smile photo as a source for simulation. So now you see when we're in the simulation tool and we select a tooth, we can transform the picture that's being cut to the shape that we actually designed. So when you select a tooth and you move the manipulators around while you're in the simulation tool you're actually changing the photo under the curve that you designed and that's cutting it to give the illusion of a tooth being there. So we're going to go through each tooth and move this picture around. Now this is really important to know even if you're not using the patient's own photo as a simulation source because when you start the simulation uh, the size of the library tooth might not be correct for the shape that you designed either. So you need to be familiar with uh, repositioning and resizing the, the texture of the tooth when you're doing simulation. And if the tooth material is not looking good for one particular tooth in the patient's mouth, as you've seen uh, with the central in this case, um, we can basically use the movement handle to move the picture around and use the material from an adjacent tooth um, in order to get something that looks good. So here we're just going back to the lip mask to tweak the contour so that it cuts the tooth uh, so it appears to actually be in the mouth. And that's looking a lot better. Um, let's activate the smudge tool and we'll do some quick smudges to shorten the teeth and get the patient's teeth out of the way. Um, now when you use the smudge tool sometimes you'll see some gaps revealed in between the teeth and that usually means that there are gaps between the actual teeth that you designed, the contours. So you can actually go back to the select tool and now when we drag these handles around we're actually changing the, the whole contour of the tooth and that's looking much better. Now we can go into the whitening tool. We can make the teeth a bit whiter and we can adjust the value so it blends in with the picture. Now one great trick to do here is to do the brightness or value adjustment on the rear teeth in order to get them to appear to be receding in the mouth. So you can reduce the brightness on these teeth one at a time and it gives the illusion of depth. And that's looking much better. So now the last thing for us to do is basically to go to the export step and take a look at the before and after. And there's our final result. So we can save this out and show it to the patient and uh, hopefully they will be excited by what they see. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or email support at tastytech.ca and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, stay tuned for a lot more coming from us very soon.